baptizes me in the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. I'm just here today to tell you that I'm grateful for the heritage that I had. My grandmother was a spirit-filled Sunday school teacher for over 30 years. You say, well, what does all that have to do? Well, let me tell you something. There were four of her grandkids that are in the ministry, too, all over the world. And I'm just here to tell you that Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8 is real because the Scripture says this, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And what does it say? You're going to be my witnesses where? First of all, in Jerusalem, and then in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I'm just telling you that Pentecost has worked in my family because we've went to some of the places that felt like the ends of the earth. Come on, somebody. I'm just here today to tell you that God wants to use you. He wants to use your family. He wants to use your children. He wants to use your grandchildren. Who's been praying over here? Because I feel it this morning. Y'all know if you keep praying, I'll preach longer and longer. I won't. I'm just kidding. Number four. We're about done. Amen. It's only 12 o'clock. Number four. Do Pentecost, do I apologize? Absolutely not because it is experiential. It's experiential. This doesn't say, but your brother is going to receive power. It says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Do you realize that we're living in an age when young people... Uh, are, are looking for supernatural power everywhere they go. Why do you think Marvel comic books have such great movies? Come on. Why do you think DC comic books have such great movies? Why is it that books like Harry Potter has such a following? Why is it that people are so interested in astrology and tarot cards and all kinds of different movies that come out magnifying the power of the wicked one. I'm just here today to tell you that if you want real power you don't have to go out in the world. Hello. I'm here today to tell you that if you want supernatural power that's experiential. If you want to experience the true God of the universe, all you gotta do is throw your hands up and start praising Him. All you gotta do is start worshiping Him and you'll find that the presence of the Lord will come upon you. I'm here today to tell you that the power of God is real. It's real. And I'm tired of the devil telling our young people there is no power. There is power. Mm. When I was a young person, I was raised in Worthington, Minnesota. My wife's hometown church, my dad was the pastor's there. She was the deacon's daughter. That's a whole other story, but anyway. When we were about 18, 17 or 18, my wife, thanks to her influence on my life, we made a decision and we pulled away from some of the young people that we ran around with. Now, I'm not saying that we were perfect. We were far from it. We were... We, we, <laughs> We needed God's grace. Hello? We needed His grace. But when I was about 21, that church in Worthington had a three-week revival meeting where the power of God was present every night. And I can tell you about all of my friends. My friends that I went to high school with, I'm talking about Jerry and Tim and Paul and Chuck and, and Lori, and I, I could just name person after person. They had all drifted away from the Lord. But during that meeting, the power of God was so present. Paul and Rhonda got up off the back seat and ran all the way down to the altar and gave their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, these are people that I love. I can't help but talk about it when I get emotional. Come on. Tell me y'all got a friend that Jesus saved. Hello? I'll never forget those days. The anointing and the power of God was so powerful on that congregation. 
But I was living in Minneapolis. My wife, she, she took the kids and she just moved into her mom and dad's house for three weeks. And I would come home on the weekends when I didn't have to work. And, and it was 180 miles from where I lived to Worthington. And at exactly 90 miles, as you under, went underneath the bridge at Mankato, I'm telling you, it was just like you were driving into the presence of God. You could, From that point on, I couldn't help it. I had to cry all the way to Worthington. I couldn't. Every time I went, it happened that way. I don't understand all of that. I, it's supernatural. I cannot really explain it. We watched a man with arthritis who could not extend his hand. God healed him just like that. There were, th there were I don't know how many people from a, a, a charismatic Catholic group that came over there. Uh, how many? 35 from a charismatic Catholic church. All of them received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in that meeting. Come on. It was so beautiful. But that's not the beautiful part. The beautiful part was exactly 20 years later when we were home at Worthington for Christmas, the day before Christmas on a Sunday, and we happened to all be there. All my friends were there visiting mom and dad on that Christmas, and we wound up getting together. We wound up sharing with one another, and the beautiful thing of it was all of those people who had experienced God and his power and his strength, every single one of them that I could name was serving the Lord Jesus Christ 20 years later. Amen. That was already about 15 years ago. I'm just here today to tell you that the power of Pentecost is real. It's real. Yesterday, my... My cousin's wife, Micah Starr, shared a little video up on Facebook. A little girl. She was about, did you see that? She was about, I don't know, five, four, maybe five. She was like this. And her eyes were closed and the tears were running down her cheeks. And there was a man that was just praying for her, but she was just so lost in the presence of Jesus. She was just so lost. Man, I watched that thing, and then I watched it again, and I, I watched it again. I said, God. That's what I want at Fountain of Life. I want that power. I want that anointing. I want my children and my children's children. I want, I want, our, I want our families to know that there's a God that's real. Because let me tell you something. Once you've experienced it, once you've tasted of it, you'll know that he's real. You'll know that he's real. Would you stand with me today?